if you've ever shot a firearm manufactured prior to 1945 that wasn't a Mosin de Gant, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is a wasteland of uh, internet just nothingness. But get in there. It's what's made the channel famous. I have no idea what I have possibly done to attract it. Uh, and I feel like I'm just like a normal dude. But in any case, if you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest supporter of our channel right now is Gun Mag Warehouse. So get in there, buy magazines from them. In the future, we're going to be having some swag that's going to come out with Grantham with your orders and stuff. It's going to be sick. Other things you can look at to support the channel, LAX Ammunition, Vertex, LAX for Ammo, Vertex for sick uh, bags, and you can carry around like a Thompson submachine gun or whatever the hell you want in there. Do all that good stuff. Gentlemen, ladies, attack helicopter, whatever you identify as, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a pretty sick little firearm right here, and that is going to be the Sten Mark II. Now, I say Mark II kind of hesitantly uh, due to the fact that there's so many weird things on this, but it is technically a Mark II, and let's talk a little bit about it. So if you're not familiar with the Sten, the Sten is a very prolific submachine gun manufactured by the British, or designed by the British, manufactured by many. Uh, in the early 40s. Why was it manufactured? Well, after the British evacuated uh, from Dun Dunkirk in the retreat, uh, they left a lot of arms behind and there was a huge arms shortage. So the Sten was one of the many um, uh, solutions to that problem. So the Sten is a very simple to manufacture um, submachine gun. It's pretty much a, <laughs> like a barrel with a barrel with a magazine and some springs in it. Literally, I believe at its simplest, it was around 47 parts, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, this firearm was known for being um, temperamental, uh, prone to jamming, very magazine dependent, uh, inaccurate, like a whole lot of things. So where does it stand? Well, it is a direct blowback weapon. So it's fairly simple. That's fairly common of the era. Um, it was open bolt. Now, this particular one was built from a parts kit by my very good friend, Foster Huntington, uh, who built it for himself, and he is kind enough to let me use it. So, it w did have to get converted uh, to semi-auto use by a modified bolt, um, you know, which sucks. You know, it sucks that you just can't have auto guns that easily. So, whatever, we obeyed the law, and we did it. You should obey the law. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about this particular firearm. Is it terrible? Is it great? To sum this gun up right now in the immortal words of Dugan Ashley from Carnicon, shitty but lethal. So moving from the front of the gun like we usually do in my reviews, let's talk a little bit about the barrel. So the barrel um, is modified. This one has a tri-lug adapter. That way we can throw on uh, you know, any, any suppressor with a tri-lug mount on it. So in this case, um, Foster also form-1'd a suppressor that he made as well, and uh, we had that out on the front there. Um, this weapon right here is form-1, so it is a short-barreled rifle, which again is another insane law. But when it comes to the barrel, a lot of people said that this weapon was inaccurate. Now, I don't believe that was in any uh, shape or form related to the barrel. Um, I think it was mostly related to the weapon being open bolt. Open bolt weapons are notoriously difficult to fire, especially at range and control for a variety of reasons. So, blowback guns use a fairly heavy bolt and fairly heavy springs to control the uh, all that energy from the round detonating. Now, in the case of the Sten, it's a fairly heavy bolt, so. Every time this thing would fire on the open bolt version, uh, the bolt would be back. When you pull the trigger, it would release forward, hit the round, the fixed firing pin was fixed, it would hit the primer, detonate the round, fly back, right? So as you're going to fire your shot, you know, you see a kraut running up and you go to smoke them with your sten, and you pull that trigger, that bolt is flying forward, and that has a tendency to then dip the rifle, and then you pull your shot and you miss it. So that's very frustrating for our, uh, you know, partisans and our British commandos trying to smoke krauts and all that good stuff. So that is, in my opinion, likely why the weapon is known as being inaccurate. Because on this closed bolt version, I've been fairly consistent in making shots out to around 127 yards, I think is the longest we shot it. But that's fairly impressive. We were firing subsonic loads as well, so um, I'm fairly proud of that. But...
it is accurate. <laughs> of course, it probably has something to do with the sights as well. The sights were very rudimentary on the normal stens. This one, of course, has a red dot. So moving back from the barrel, let's talk about this. We have a barrel shroud. So Californians, beware. This thing is super illegal right now. That thing's just all those scary features. But the barrel shroud would, of course, heat up quite a bit in automatic fire. Now, for the semi-auto version like we have right here, not so much. Um, now, the correct way to hold the sten, according to historians and all these people, is you grasp around here. Now, in fact, they used to issue leather uh, leather covers right there. That way you wouldn't burn your hand. But in any case, you're supposed to hold it up here like this, very much like a traditional rifle, and bring your you know cheek onto the stock and everything. However, a lot of people had a tendency to grab onto the magazine and fire like that, like a gangster, me included, because the gangster life chose me. It's a hard life, but it's life. Um, but the problem with holding onto the magazine is that it can mess with the uh, feed angle as it wear, does some premature wear on the firearm itself. So it's not ideal. Now, there's a lot of evidence to, to suggest that that is true. Um, it's not ideal, but, you know, you do you. It's going to be your firearm if you end up buying one. Uh, speaking of this, we have Magwell right here. It's a simple stamped um, magazine release, and we have the magazine. The magazine is a 32-round magazine. It goes from a double stack to a single stack. Now, it is kind of a bitch to load, um, and that's it. Now, the Sten is famously magazine dependent, so um, you definitely need to have magazines that are in good shape to make sure that the Sten works. Now, the problem is, is that these magazines are so old, you run into just a lot of crappy magazines, which lead to a lot of problems for a lot of Stens. So, you know, these are around eight bucks, so we bought like a pack of like eight of them, and of those eight, like two of them are fairly reliable for us. So, Buyer beware with semi-autos, it's not amazing reliability with a lot of the magazines out there, but it does work once you find the ones that are good for you. Um, we're going to be experimenting with swapping out magazine springs, seeing what we can do for these, but we'll check it out later. And I understand that there are some modern copies of magazines that might perform better, so be aware of that. Okay, moving from the magazine, we have what would typically be a front sight post and a rear sight. Now, again, very rudimentary not a whole lot to them. That probably led to what a lot of people perceived as the accuracy problems. But we went ahead and we tick railed it a uh, pick rail into this bitch because it's 2019. We need to bring this thing to the future. So we have those, <clears throat> you know, sweet Elysium vibes going on this gun right now. I'm loving it. We have a SIG red dot on there. Uh, let it be known that I hate SIG red dots, but you know, that's what we had. So we kind of just went ahead and sent it. But, um, with the red dot on there, it's fairly simple to make shots. In fact, I did a lot of shooting under night vision with this because the stock is so low and the sight is so high that it's like the perfect height with night vision to shoot this thing. It was actually a lot of fun. Now, the SIG actually sucked with night vision, but that's uh, for another review when I'll wreck them. Um, so bolt, of course, is heavy. Bolt handle right here is a bitch. Um, it's very sharp. I'd recommend gloves when operating this. Maybe I have pretty mannish hands. They're pretty dry and jacked up and calloused, but it's just sharp and <clears throat> it's very stiff to, to actuate and operate. So it just kind of sucks, but that's charging handle. Moving back from there, we have all the internals and we have the trigger. So what is the trigger like? Don't you worry, gentlemen. I got you and ladies and everybody else, whatever you identify as. So go ahead and I'm going to put my finger right here. You're going to put your finger right over mine. We're going to go ahead and we're going to ghost this together. So first off, we have a lot, a lot of play right there. So we have all that play. Bring it down. We hit this solid wall. We have a pretty solid military trigger there. I'm guessing all heavy poundage north of eight pounds for sure. Let's go and let's feel that one more time right there. It works. Let's feel the reset. So the reset being how far forward I have to let the trigger before I can pull that trigger again and send another round down range. So let's go ahead and feel that. All right, pretty positive uh, reset right there. It goes right back into our hard trigger pull. It isn't terrible. Um, as far as Milserp guns go, I'm actually fairly uh, happy with it. It's not, it's not bad. I'm definitely limited compared to other pistol caliber carbines that I've typically shot, but it works.
All right, moving back from there, we have our stock. So we have a pretty typical stock. Um, we have wrapped it with some leather just to make sure that's a little bit more comfortable to grip and to put our delicate cheeks against. So that's nice. Now right here is typically the selector. We can go semi to full auto. It famously would have trouble or would go full auto or semi when you didn't want it to. And also the Sten is fairly, fairly widely known for if you have a round in the chamber with a bolt forward and you slam it down, it's going to detonate. Now on this one, that's not so much the case because we don't have a fixed firing pin, but let that be known with the uh, actual full auto Stens. How does it compare? How does this thing stack up against modern, um, you know, pistol caliber carbines and modern submachine guns and uh, even older submachine guns? So compared to like the, oh shit. So <laughs> compared to like the uh, Sig Evo Scorpion, uh, you don't like the Evo Scorpion a whole lot. So, you know, screw that thing. But um, compared to like the MP5, the MP5 is a superior uh, firearm. So let's take like Zenith with their MP5 clone. We did a couple um, different drills with the Zenith uh, MP5 clone and the Sten to see which one was faster. Now, the MP5 has a roller delayed system, a better trigger, uh, quicker to fire and all that kind of stuff. So due to that, the MP5 absolutely crushed the Sten when it came to the competition. Okay, so we have the uh, bare standards drill, five on each, reload, three in the center. Now, with all that being said, you know, the Sten's still a cool gun. It has a lot of character. Same with the MP5 and the clones thereof. I find that like a lot of the newer pistol caliber carbines and submachine guns, like the, the Scorpion and the MPX and the, and the Vector, I don't know, they just don't feel cool like these older ones did, you know? Like, there's just something about these just older submachine guns that I'm just a huge fan of. I just love the way they look. So if you're looking to get one of these, there are part kits everywhere. If you're very handy and you know what you're doing, you can build one of these pretty easily and for pretty much on the cheap. It's fairly cheap to do. The semi-auto conversion kind of messes with it a little bit. But overall, a fairly fun firearm to, to shoot and mess with. Again, I've just really enjoyed uh, shooting this and having my hands on this. So go check it out. Um, Recoil Impulse, again, is more than MP5, but pretty comparable to most uh, pistol caliber carbines and submachine guns that you'll shoot uh, today, just due to the fact that it's a direct blowback. So pretty sick little gun. Get out there and uh, check it out, guys. Um, but here's the thing. You know, if you have this, if this is all you have, uh, you're going to be fine as long as you get that training, you train with it. So make sure that you get training, guys. You know that I recommend training for everything. So, you know, go out there, Esoteric, Darcy, Direct, Direct Action Resource Center, Haley Strategic, Cogworks, Bear Solutions, um, uh, Core Vision. All these guys are great trainers. Get out there and check them out. Um, <laughs> the scent makes you look cool. That's all that matters, gentlemen. We know that. So, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. I've got nothing else for you. Okay, last thing for you is going to be omega-3s. Make sure that you are uh, getting omega-3s in your diet. They come from salmon and fish oil and that type of thing. Highly recommended. There's a lot of good evidence to support it. Check it out. Now, if you've gotten this far, you know what's next. Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like Costco, but for guns. I, all my fans have been getting really good deals lately. Again, I don't promote things if I don't believe in them. Big Daddy Unlimited rocks. Link's right below. Check it out. Make sure to watch every single freaking video out there. I love you guys. Fucking love you.